Good morning. Happy Monday. I know uh, that I don't want to bring a lot of heaviness to this video. However, I want to speak to the heaviness of the state of the world right now. Um, I feel that it's very important to acknowledge and address just where things are at, where, <laughs> where the psyche, I think, of a lot of us are feeling. Um, yesterday was Mental Health Day, World National Mental Health Day, and I feel that it's important to have us a bit of a discussion about how we are doing in our mental health right now. And as a leader of love and opening hearts to the world right now, I feel more than ever that the majority of the collective of us are feeling very heavy and feeling like our hearts are feeling the need to close and protect ourselves. And um, I even woke up to a message this morning from a woman that I've been supporting, just asking for help, asking for guidance on how do we really manage the heaviness of the external world and feeling pretty depleted, feeling pretty caught up in the bleakness and the lack of hope, the lack of excitement for the future and all that goes with that, the fears, the anxieties, the, the, just the nervousness of the uncertainty of the future. And um, I feel it's important to talk about and address and make sure that we are all doing everything that we can to take care of ourselves, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. So I want to talk about this. And uh, I will first start off by saying, if any of you are feeling this way, you are not alone in feeling this way. This is something that is really, really normal and is pretty unprecedented. As I know, <laughs> that term has been thrown around, these uncharted times, these unprecedented times. These are really chaotic, crazy, weird times. And now you throw an election in the middle of all of it, and it just throws the world even more into just a funk, right? And into just a, a cluster. <laughs> So it is completely okay to be feeling heavy, to be feeling doubtful, to be feeling scared, to be feeling depressed, to be feeling like there's no hope, to be feeling any of the feelings that are not in that place of joy and light and radiance and exuberance and all of those other shadow, other opposite side feelings, right? So if you are feeling any of these feelings, I want you to just give yourself some grace and some compassion today to just recognize it's okay. It's okay. And with the, the cloud, it feels like there's this big dark cloud that is just over our heads right now, right? Of the external world with the social issues, with the political issues, with the environmental issues. There are just, there's so many things that we as our little human bodies and human psyches are just like, I don't know how to manage this. I really don't even know how to move through this, right? And give me a thumbs up if this is anything you're feeling, comment below, anything of the feelings that you're feeling right now. Our little human bodies and psyches do not know how to handle the pressure of this external world right now. And this is something that we have not ever had to manage before, okay? So the heaviness is real. It's a real deal, and I've experienced it for myself as well. And there are always going to be those roller coasters, ups and downs of moving through these feelings, right? But the most important thing is that we do not get swept up into these feelings, that we do not get swept up into the fears of these feelings, and that we still find some way to navigate and move through all of this just craziness of the external so that we can find that peace and that calm and that place of centered groundedness within ourself. Because if we don't have that centered groundedness within ourself, it's going to make it a lot harder to be able to navigate and go through the everydays of our lives. Okay? So the first message here, when we talk about how do we get back to that place of grounded sense of self and navigating all the heaviness is to first recognize that it is an illusion. Okay? <laughs> and you're probably like, what are you talking about? It's not an illusion. It's very real. There are riots happening right outside my door. And I know because there are, right? I know. I know that it, there is a reality of what is happening, but the energy attached to it is an illusion. The energy attached to it comes out of a place of fear, comes out of a place of ego, comes out of a place of trying to control and trying to gain power. 
okay? And all of this is a construct that we make up in our minds. It's our minds trying to play mental warfare with each other, trying to succeed, trying to push ahead, trying to become better than others, trying to whatever the agenda is, okay? So that's the first thing to recognize is that the, the emotions, the heaviness that comes up through all of this is all made up. It's, it's mental heaviness, okay? There was, there was a man who was out in, um, he was doing a trek in Alaska for the last like, God, I think four months, like re leading, leading up right to the pandemic. And then he came out of his trek from Alaska, like halfway through the pandemic. And he was just like, what happened to the world, right? He, he was so unplugged for all of that time from being out in the woods of Alaska with no cell reception, no access to social media, that he was living his life. He was fine. He was dandy, right? Everything was good. He was centered. He was at peace within himself. But only when he plugged back into our world here, into the social media, and we'll talk about that in a second, does it, did it really start to hit him? Holy crap. There's a lot of heaviness going on, right? And I bring this up in a sense to really like to actually explain how much this really is just a construct in our mind. Because if it was really true fear and threat in our everyday experience, he would have been noticing it in his daily experience, but he was removed from it. And although not all of us can be removed from it in the <laughs> being out in Alaska, we can remove ourselves from the energy of it in our daily experience. Okay? And that starts with making sure that we're being very, very careful about the inputs that we allow into our experience. So not only is this unprecedented times of what we're experiencing as human bodies, but we're also in a place where we are having more access than ever to seeing all of it all the time because of social media. If you think about it, social media is not that old, right? It's only been around for the last 10 years or so in really that presence and that strength and that, that strong um, power that it's starting to have over our psyches. And what it's doing is it's making everything feel a lot bigger because we can see what's going on in Belarus. We can see what's going on in, you know, in China. We can see what's going on all over the world in the United States. And so it naturally is just causing all of us to carry the weight of the world, literally the weight of the world on our shoulders because we have access to the information of knowing what is going on everywhere in the world. So I'm not saying that I want you to stick your head in the sand and pretend that you just don't know anything or just go off to Alaska and you're going to be blissful, but I'm just painting these, these opposites for you to be able to recognize and see just how big and why this is all feeling so big and so heavy because we have been just having these kind of layers of new types of experiences come onto our human little psyche and the psyche is just like whoa i i do not know how to move through this right i've never had to deal with this before so when we can look at it from that perspective and say okay we have social media that's making everything just so much more in our face and more prominent and more exacerbated, right? With the energy and preying on people's fears, preying on people's pain. Then we have the fact that we just have a lot going on <laughs> in this year of 2020. And then we have just the everyday human experience of needing to take care of ourselves, needing to eat, needing to sleep, needing to make money, all of that kind of stuff, needing to love, <laughs> right? And then we throw on putting on masks on our face that just makes it just so uncomfortable and so hard to breathe and so constricted, right? It's, it's no wonder that we feel so darn disconnected from our truest essence, right? There's no wonder that we are feeling so heavy, so exacerbated, so frustrated, so depressed, so dark, so anxious, so fearful, okay? And once again, I'm just, I'm honoring the woman that reached out to me asking for help. And I'm honoring each of you here that is listening and hearing this because this is so, so okay. However, this does not need to be our operating system. This does not need to be the way that we need to continue to move forward in the world. And it can't be the way that we continue to move forward in the world because it is, it's slowly killing us. It's slowly suffocating us. And we need to start to get to the place where we can manage 
finding that groundedness, finding that sense of self, that strength, that security within ourself, even when the world is a chaotic, swirling mess, right? Even when it feels like we are in the middle of a tornado and we can't feel the ground, because that's truly what it feels like right now. I know for me and probably for a lot of you. So how do we get to that place? Well, there's a few tactical things that you can do right now to make sure that you are honoring that space for yourself. And then there's some bigger long-term things that you can do to honor. So let's talk through those. The first one being awareness, right? Recognizing the power that you are giving to the external world on your happiness. If we look to the external world to provide us that sense of peace and calm, we are never going to be happy. We are never going to be happy and we're never going to find that peace and calm because the world is always going to have its ups and downs, right? It's always going to have its conflicts. So we cannot look to the external world to make us happy. We have to know that the external world is going to exist and we get to detach from it. There is a, there's a, a a phrase in, in The Course in Miracles that talks about the veil of separation, the separation from the self. And a lot of times we are clouded in our seeing, in what we can see because we have this veil of separation where we are only operating in the external world and not operating from that place of self. And so in that separation, we feel really alone. We feel really scared. We, we allow the fear to dictate because we don't feel connected to our self. Right? And when we don't feel disconnected from ourselves, and then we see that the world is a crazy chaotic place that we don't want to be in, it makes us feel, it makes our ego mind feel like, why are we even here? Where are we going? What are we trying to get to? Right? And it makes it want to give up. And I want to just talk to that and say, if that's what you're feeling right now, just know, please do not give up. Mental health is a real thing. It's really important. And it's not anything that you have to stay stuck in. We can get back to seeing it for what it really is. You're caught up in the mind. You're caught up in the fear. You're caught up in the stories. You're caught up in the external world. And it's time to pull back. And it's time to get back to the self, the deep soul, the aligned, grounded, peaceful soul that is within you, that is deeper, that is underneath the mind, that is underneath the fear, that is underneath all of the scary stuff of the dark clouds that you are probably feeling yourself swept up in. It's kind of like underneath the surface of, um, of an ocean. If you think about the ocean, at the top of the ocean, the waves are turbulent. There's a lot going on, right? There's just choppy waters. It's, it's a, they've got big waves, big, you know, just craziness up there. If our mind is up there, it's gonna be like, whoa, the world is crazy and the, like, the, the water is crazy, the ocean's crazy. But when you start to sink down and submerge below, what do you find? You find that even on when the surface is choppy, underneath there is that peaceful, calm, tranquil state of, of groundedness, of peace, of just whew, the beautiful flow of the underground or the, under, the undercurrents of the water, right? Just flowing, just doing what it needs to do, bringing beautiful nutrients where it needs to go nourishing the plants and the animals underneath. And that's where we need to get to. When you feel your mind starting to get up into the choppy waters, we have to remember that we get to pull ourselves back down into the undercurrent, the beautiful, peaceful undercurrent. And we do that by starting to, like I said, one, just be aware of it and recognize when we're getting caught up into the choppy waters. And then two is going to be about starting to recognize what is pulling me into my mind. What are the triggers? What are the indicators that make me go, oh God, oh God, right? And starting to address those directly. So if it is wearing masks that's causing you to go, oh God, I can't feel good. I just, I feel like I just want to suffocate. I can't breathe, right? What can you do to start adjusting that? Either, I know they have like those, um, those shield masks that can be really great instead of wearing the ones that are literally right on your face. So maybe it's about talking to your employer and say, hey, I really need to start wearing a shield mask instead of one of these, these mask things, right? If it's the, the news that's just making you go crazy, it is completely okay to take a little break from the news and just let yourself have that space to just pull back a little bit 
Hi, Sophia. So good. I'm so glad to see you on here. Um, if it is, gosh, if it is your family members having conversations about politics that just make you go crazy, it's okay to set those boundaries and say, hey, you know what? I'm not feeling comfortable to talking about this right now. I need to make sure that I'm protecting myself and just keeping myself in a, in a more positive space. Whatever it is, just start to think about what are the identifiers that are causing you to get swept up into the mind, into the choppy waters, into the depression, the anxiety, the frustration, the fear and starting to see it for what it is, and then managing those things, right? Managing those triggers, every single one of them. And then the third part of it is about actually starting to drop into the space of, how do I get back to that place of peace and calm within myself? How do I get back to that place of knowing that I am divinely supported and that my soul is safe? Right? Because a lot of this, I think, that's happening is that we're getting these triggers of making it feel like we are not safe. And it's, it's a very valid feeling, but it's still not true. You are safe. You are safe. You are going to be safe. You will continue to be safe. Even if the world truly falls to hell in a handbasket, we are going to be safe because you know what? Humans are so incredibly adaptable. And we are going to adapt and we're going to thrive. It may be a little bit uncomfortable, but we are going to get through this. We're going to get through this as a collective. We're going to get through this as an individual. And this is going to be just one of those bumpy patches that we kind of just have to hold on to and ride this out. But in the riding it out, we can choose. Do we want this to be a really painful experience or do we want this to be a more calming, relaxed experience? And you get to decide that. You get to decide that by the inputs that you allow in and by the maintenance that you take care of yourself on the daily, sometimes on the hourly, right? So what are you doing to give yourself that maintenance, that mental health self-care maintenance that gives you that peace and that calm and that place of, okay, I'm going to be okay, right? For me, it's meditation, that's number one. Every time I drop into meditation, and I've been deepening into a lot of transcendental meditation, really accessing depths of my sub subconscious that my mind is completely turned off, or I can really go into that place of connecting to my inner spirits, to my angels, to my, I call them my angel counsel, right? And asking them for support, asking for guidance, asking for those intuitive nudges and that inspiration. When I connect into that place, I know I am so guided and I know I am so supported because you're not in this alone, right? Your soul came down to this earth with a mission and whatever that mission is, you may still be figuring out, but it came down to this earth with a mission and that mission is not just for your human experience and your human body to try and do all by itself. It's here and it's backed up by your angels and it's, and it's in that. That's where you pull through this intuition. Every time you have those little intuitive nudges, that's your angels being like, go that way, go that way. <laughs> Try that out. Try that out. So when you come back into that place of really deepening into your meditation, you can get to that place of starting to access those intuitive nudges and those inspired actions. And the more we listen to those inspired actions, the more we give ourselves that comfort and that relief of knowing I don't have to do this all myself. I don't have to do this all myself. I can relax and I can trust that I am divinely guided. And although I wish I wasn't put on this earth at this specific time because it's not very fun, I'm here with a bigger pish, a, a, a bit of bigger mission, <laughs> a bigger purpose and a bigger mission. And in that bigger purpose and mission, I know I'm going to find peace because I'm meant to be here for this reason. I'm meant to be here to help move this world forward. And when we get down to that place, then it no longer becomes being a victim of the situation of our experience. It becomes a co-creative experience. It becomes an empowered experience. Ooh, this is so good. It becomes a place of you choosing to be here right now in the muck, in the darkness, in the heaviness, and recognizing, I want this right? I want this because I get to show up more powerfully. I get to show up in my essence and be the true catalyst that this world needs to propel us into where we need to truly get to, right? Because let's be honest, the last hundred years 
have not been the best for our Earth, for our poor Mama Earth. We need to start shifting the way that we operate as a human species, as an environmental species, as stewards of the Earth. I won't get into it too much, but it's it's such a beautiful time to be alive right now. And more than ever, we are waking up as a human collective and recognizing, okay, one, there's a lot more going on than just what our mind sees. And two, we've got bigger missions and we need to start waking up to all these things that aren't working and break down these systems that are no longer supporting us and start recreating new systems that will let us thrive. Whoo, preach, amen, mama, oh my gosh. Right? So. If this is you, I want you to really deepen into this and start asking yourself these bigger questions, right? Instead of how do I just get through the day to day, I want you to ask yourself, how do I really get to show up to step into my fullest power to thrive and carry this world forward? Ooh, even if you don't feel that you're meant to be a leader and a steward for the world in, in, you know, in a massive large scale, that's okay. We don't all need to be the leaders, but we get to be leaders on little levels, in our communities, in our families, in our friend groups, in every way that allows us to show up in our power and essence, we are radiating out like little drops in the ocean. I'm bringing it back to the drops in the ocean, right? The more of us that drop into that power within ourselves, it's like a little drop, it just radiates out more and more and more. And the more that we radiate out, the more others start to feel that, they radiate out, and the next thing we know, we're causing a whole revolution. And that's what's happening. We are in the middle of a massive transformation, spiritually, politically, environmentally, a huge massive transformation. And more and more people are starting to step into their power and into their presence and recognizing, I don't like the way that this is all working, so let's start to fix it. Right? So getting back to the heaviness, hopefully this is kind of just starting to whew, fluff your aura a little bit, right? And like pull out some of this heaviness because it's a heavy time. I'm not going to uh, pretend that it's not, but we get to choose how we let that, effect, that heaviness affect us. We can either use it to push it down the heaviness, right? Pull down the heaviness and stand on top of it and use it as a platform for our power. Oh, yes, love that. Or we can use it or feel it as an anvil shoving us down, squishing us down, pushing us down forever, right? You get to transmute that power. You get to transmute that energy and pull it in for your success and for the world's success. <sighs> mm. I'm going to pause here for a second. I'm seeing some comments coming through. Sophia, love this. Accessing this has been one of my greatest lessons throughout life. Love hearing that. Beautifully put. I love that. I'm so glad this is resonating for you. Yeah, anyone else that's watching that wants to comment, please feel free to write comments in. I just think I know that these little moments and this the, the little leading up moments of every every day, every month of this year have been really, really hard. But I guess what I offer you today and what I offer to my beautiful client who reached out to me that I want to speak to her is we get to really just zoom out, right? It's time to zoom out. It's time to detach from the everyday moments. It's time to detach from the narrative of what we're seeing and what we're experiencing in this current little reality right now. And it feels like all that we can see and start to zoom out and see the bigger picture here. And ask yourself, what is the bigger picture? And what is the picture that I want to see? What is the narrative that I want to start telling? Is, is the narrative that I want to listen to that the world is doom and gloom and that I'm going to, that the future is bleak and that we're all going to fall to hell in a handbasket, right? Or is the, is the narrative that this is the most beautiful, most awakening time that our human species, human species has ever seen? And I get to be a part of that. And that I get to be a part of that in the ways that I can bring my unique gifts and talents to the world. I don't know about you, but that's the story that I really want to start stepping into. And when we can choose to, to zoom out and see it and shift the narrative, that's when we start to pull back our power. That's when we start to step into our strength of who we truly are for this world. And we get to start to see that I actually, I don't live in the world. I live above this world, right? I live detached. That veil of separation no longer exists and you become connected back to the spirit, 
back to the soul that you truly are and you get to see the world for what it really is, which is just a manifestation of the collective consciousness. So it comes back to our individual responsibility to manage our consciousness, to manage our stories, to manage our mind and make sure that we're not giving over our control to the fear, to the scare tactics, to the everything that is trying to come at us. That we get to put a, a temporary pause, a temporary block on that, come back into who we are, reground, recenter, re-rally, right? And then come back out into the world again and see it in a whole new perspective. And I'll give you um, a really beautiful little anecdote story for myself. I, um, I went and had an energy healing done on Tuesday, right after my birthday. It was a gift to myself. And I, I've been a huge advocate of energy healing and I'm actually an, a practiced energy practitioner um, myself. So I, I love being able to give that as a gift, but I also recognize the importance of receiving it. And I went to an energy healer and she did some just beautiful, just um, she ran my bars. She did a lot of like heart opening work, a lot of like spleen work randomly. <laughs> Excuse me. But moving through that, you know, I could feel myself in the beginning of it. I too, I mean, I have human struggles as well, right? I could feel my mind just being like, rah, 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 <laughs> for a good 20 minutes of it. But then I started to really deepen into it. I really started to relax into it. And after the hour long experience, you know, she left the room and she let me just lay on the table. And I was just feeling this lightness, this etherealness, this just energetic like buzzing, this warm tingliness just throughout my entire body as if I could truly feel that there was this like soul and body connection, but that I wasn't holding the heaviness of my body. I was like, I was out of it. I was, I was still in my body, but I could recognize that it was just the vessel for me to go out and do my daily things, right? But I was so much more than my body, that I was my spirit and my soul and my spirit was there and it was vibrating and it was tingly and it was warm. And as I opened my eyes, it was the craziest, strangest experience. As I opened my eyes and I laid there on the table, just this massage table, and I looked around and I could hear the birds and I could see the candles and I could just see the beautiful room, I truly saw and felt that I was zoomed out of the identity of the mind. I could really feel like I was the soul embodied in a body, if that makes sense, right? I felt detached. I didn't feel like I was plugged into like, okay, I gotta check my Instagram and I gotta go answer these emails. And like in the mind, I was just in this place of just zooming out and observing and watching and seeing how everything unfolded. And as I walked out into the day and went and got lunch, I was just noticing how I observed and how I spoke to people and how I could really shift my interactions with people from this place of feeling detached and from this place of truly being this soul essence versus just the human essence. And it's so much more peaceful and it's so much more grounded and so much more in touch with your highest alignment. So I hope that this message has hit home for you. I hope that you've had some takeaways. I'd love for you to comment below what some of your takeaways have been from this conversation. I hope that this has been helpful for you in just opening up and releasing, hopefully, some of that heaviness, right? Fluffing the aura, Ugh. letting some of this go, this, this stagnant, this just energy that is out there just recognizing, although it's out there, we do not need to plug into it. And I guess the last thing is, is just really prioritize some play today, some play and some joy today into your day to day. Ask yourself, what can I do to tap back into the play and into the joy and bring some lightness back into my experience? Because I tell you, it's been something I, I too have had to kind of move through a lot of heavy layers lately that have been coming up. But as I've been moving through them, crying through them, energy healing through them, massaging through them, dancing through them, right? I've moved into a place of just feeling that lightness again and feeling that playfulness again. And when we can bring in that playfulness, it allows everything else to just kind of flow a lot easier. And this is so important to just let ourselves have that flow and that just release because play and laughter and lightness is what allows for us to release the heaviness that doesn't serve us. So think about what you can do to, to prioritize your joy 
And if any of you want to just have a one-off coaching session with me and just talk through this more, or just have me hold space for you, I'm happy to do that. I will leave my email below and we can just get on a call and I can hold space for you and, and really give you some time to, to process because I know that this is a lot that's happening for each of us and it is a lot to, to manage on our own. And you're not alone, my dears. You're not alone. I'm going through it. I'm moving through it too, but um, we can get through this and we will get through this together. And I'm so happy to have each of you in my community. Namaste. Thanks for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Relax Into Love podcast. If you are loving what you're hearing, please, I would love for you to write me a heartfelt review. It means so much for the success of this podcast. And honestly, I love hearing what really hits home for your soul and the feedback, really, I read every piece of it. So definitely pop me a love note and share this with a friend. Share this with someone who you know could really use this message today. And let's keep spreading the love. Until next time.